Quattro Group S build um, have been busy. So we've been busy making wiring looms, busy doing exhaust, busy doing lots of little five minute jobs and stuff like that. And and honestly, like the amount of hours I've spent making this wiring loom, it's been ridiculous. It, you sort of regret putting all these extra sensors on just to be, you know, um, well, because you can really, so. But we're kind of there now. We've got all the back half of the car wired up, ready to go. The centre half of the car's nearly wired up and we're gonna get on with the front part of the wiring loom. So we're gonna run through that with you today, just sort of show you um, how I do it, um, what sort of materials we use, the crimp, crimp sort of tools and stuff like that. Um, Autosport connectors. We're gonna do like a little bit of an overview of the lot really and then We've added some extra bits on to make the car um, user friendly for when we sort of service the car as well. So I'll show you through those bits as well. So yeah, thanks for waiting and I'm glad everybody's health and stuff is all in good condition. And yeah, we'll hope you enjoy the video. One of the things we've got, which is gonna be really good for this car is there's, we've got two power distribution modules in the vehicle. So there's one in the back that solely operates the back half of the car. And one of the good features of that is that just allows us to operate all of the power systems, all of the rear tail lights, reverse lights, indicators, all the bits and pieces that, you know, potentially need power up the back of the car. And then we could link all those back together to the front power distribution module. And that then can operate the rest of the car, like the thematic fans, the fuel pumps, all the headlight system, the power steering, all that sort of stuff in the front of the car. So uh, one of those, the, the power distribution module just allows no fuses and relays to be in a car. So everything can be programmed and it can be all linked via CAN bus as well, um, via the ECU, the keypad, um, the dashboard, whatever you want to do really. So. And it just allows a lot more flexibility. And one of the little key things that we've got in the back as well is, is when you service the car, um, you've got to do like a fuel drain out or a pump out and stuff like that, or you've got to do a compression test or whatever. Um, we've added in one of our small keypads here. And so um, this is a little four button keypad that integrates into the rear power distribution module and we could operate the engine starter motor, uh, fuel pump, lift pumps, and um, radiator fan from the back of the car. So I could be standing over here, to push the button, then fuel will come out. Then obviously when, when you see that there's no more fuel coming out, etc., you could just turn off the pump and stuff like that, and away you go. So it's quite a handy little device, the little keypad. I just sort of, when you when you're here by yourself maintaining the car, it just it's so much easier if you're not like running around the car to open doors to turn fuel pumps on and off and stuff like that. It 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 will make my life easier. So we've added that in, and that that's going to be a good little feature. So the the engine loom actually took quite a lot of hours to make because there's just so much of it. You know, the the back half of the car is actually quite dense with parts. You know, we've got. Um, wastegate control, we've got, you know, turbo management, we've got um, coils, fuel, or not, you know, coils, injectors, there's lots of stuff. And, and also as well, in, within the engine loom as well, you've got to run, there's, there's specialised cabling for the crank triggers to reject um, interference and noise and stuff like that. So there's special material that you need to use for that as well. So the, the, the engine bay loom, that, that pretty much takes the longest part. And, and inside the car, that took even longer because the, you've got two, 
you've got a power distribution module and then you've also got the engine ECU and then it comes to like bulkhead connectors. And when you, when I kind of make a loom for the vehicle, I, I tend to uh, measure up the car, stuff like that. And then you try to make things through bulkhead connectors like these ones here. And that way you're not poking extra wires through grommets and stuff like that. So even stuff like we've got, I've integrated in a reversing camera um, system into the loom. So, you know, that way, if I do add one, I don't have to add extra wires on top of it and stuff like that. So you've got to kind of forward plan any extras that you need to do really, because you're always going to want extras. It's just, it's just the way motorsport goes, isn't it, you know? Now with mood lighting, we're into the center of the car. And this is where the battery is gonna live for the vehicle. So we just use a conventional Red Top 30 uh, Odyssey battery. Um, I love them, they work. The car will crank over good. Um, yes, you can get a lithium battery, but they set fire and stuff like that, all those bad things. So, But I love using the lithium, the um, Red Top 30s. They work quite well. Bought from competition supplies as well. So. Uh, this is the ECU's, or sorry, the vehicle's isolator relay for the car. So this cuts off the main power and we've got an external switch and an internal switch to do that as well. And one of the things we do with the external switch and internal switch, there's a link wire that goes from that also to the engine's PDM as well. And that creates like a kill input for the vehicle as well. And that can be programmed into the software. So that way, if you heard, if a marshal turns off on the outside, that kill input can also tell the ECU, sorry, it's a busy time of year. So yeah, that can also tell the actual engine ECU to, to cut off as well. So that way the alternator is not gonna over keep the engine running and stuff like that. So that works quite well. Got nice protective boots that cover everything. Everything with a power has got a red tag on it. Everything with a ground has got a yellow tag on it. So it makes identification quite easy to um, allow, you know, sort of connections, stuff like that. Up the back, this is where the engine ECU is going to live and also the rear power distribution module. So we just got a PDM 15 for the rear and that does 15 auxiliary outputs. Um, M150, that's going to be running the general purpose race software on it and that's going to do majority of the engine, a little bit of the chassis logging for the vehicle as well. So that's quite a powerful unit and we've got a base map that we're going to use, that we're going to have from Ray, the Pikes Peak car and that will be a good starting point for this engine and stuff like that. So. Looking forward to getting this calibrated and synced into the vehicle. And th th this will work quite well. The engine ECU also links into the car's keypad and then boost levels can be changed, anti-lag systems can be active, um, all sorts of stuff like that. So it's quite, being all MoTeC all throughout the car, they're all like best mates, so they all talk to each other. They everything sort of can send data forwards or back. Um, so that way, integration into the vehicle is actually quite quite a good thing. It's quite simplistic as well. So through the car, we've got um, CAN bus communication area network is the correct term for it, and that basically sends data throughout the vehicle. And this car's got three CAN buses, and then we have one dedicated purely for the brake system, linking to the engine ECU and the MoTeC. And then we have another one that's for ancillaries, like dashboards, um, video camera systems, stuff like that. And then we have um, the third CAN bus, which links all the key MoTeC devices, dashes, PDMs, and stuff like that. So try to keep them separate. So. Heaven forbid something happens with a device or something like that, and it does bring the CAN bus down, it's not gonna stop the vehicle. So that's priority really, is just to make sure that the vehicle keeps running and everything operates correctly. Right, so this is a small example of some of the material that we use for the wiring loom. So all of the actual outer covering is what they call Raycam DR25, 
And this is kind of like a motorsport standard, really, for um, covering, really. It's nice and robust. It's got a lovely round shape. Um, it's heat resistant and it just protects everything basically and it's waterproof and stuff like that as well. And also as well, we do what they call concentric twisting on the looms as well and that, that just allows um, noise cancellation in the loom, uh, flexibility for the actual loom as well and it, and it carries a nice comfort or you know, sort of concentric shape for the actual loom. So when you do shrink it, you'll, you'll have like a nice round sort of covering for it really. So it all sort of helps quite well. And as you can see, we've got a nice industrial crimper here at EPS. So we can sort of save a lot of ratchet crimping to, to allow all the main connections to the ECU and PDMs to be sort of crimped on that. And they're all done at a preset crimp height and they're guaranteed that, you know, if you strip the wire properly, then that'll crimp the wire properly as well. And you'll have no risk of failure for any of the actual wires as well. So yeah, that's kind of what we do really. Does each color correspond to a different slot within the different wires? Yeah, hundred percent. I, I, I tend to try to make a lot of the colors uniform in the actual loom. So, a traditional red wire will be a, some sort of power, whether it be a five volt or a 12 volt. And there'll be a traditional like black wire, which will be like a, a sensor ground or a zero volt. And it just, for me, it makes uh, loom manufacture a lot, lot easier because as you can see here, I've got like the colors of the rainbow of the, the um, wires at the background. And if, I think if you're making a loom for just yourself, then maybe all white wiring harness is the way forward because then you just buy one roll and then you can sort of carry on for there. So when you have to buy like 10 or different, so rolls to get all your different colors, that's when it becomes a bit more expensive. But, you know, cause I'm making a lot of looms with the job I do, I, I tend to invest the money into the colors of the loom so that way I can just, you know, I know a green wire is a throttle position sensor, a violet wire is an air temperature sensor, you know, stuff like that. So I kind of, you get your own little natural colors of what you want to do. And I tend to carry on that same format with all the actual sensors in the loom as well. So if you see like any three pin connector on the actual vehicle as well, I normally put the zero volt in the lowest number of the plug, uh, pin one, and then the voltage will be in the highest number on the actual plug. So that'll be pin three, then pin two will be the signal. And so then when you go to like your two pin connectors, that'll be the same. That'll be like the lowest number will be the ground, then the highest number will be the signal. So that way, if you have to do any diagnostics or, or wiring of sensors or whatever, the, the whole loom's standardized basically. And then it's only when you go to like four pins or higher, that's when you have to start documenting like, you know, what the different pins are and what the different actual parts are in the actual loom. Nice. So. And uh, I've noticed the bog roll on the table. Uh, does that have any important significance? <laughs> it is a shit job this, isn't it? I'm sorry, we're not meant to swear, are we? But you could bleep that. But the bog roll's there for when you're booting these boots here. So when you, when you, when you got, when you got the loom glue and stuff here and you've got gloves on and bits and pieces, you always get a bit of discharge out the, the back here and you don't want loom discharge. So I use just a bit of bog roll, just sort of mop up the ends, you know, get rid of the actual excess glue and then away you go. And then it just keeps it off the carpet, keeps everyone happy and stuff like that really. So yeah, that's the reason for the bog roll. Well, thanks for watching if you got this far and that's a little bit of an insight to what sort of goes into the wiring looms for these sort of projects. They take long, so thanks for the patience and the lack of videos because, you know, it just takes a long time and you probably don't want to see me crimp every wire and twist every wire for this project because the it would be very, very long and boring. So, you know, but we're here now, we've got the loom made. We've got some stuff arriving soon from Motec that 
will be really good fun to unbox and show you what we've got coming from them. And we're there and we're super happy to have them on board on the project as well. So that's going to be an exciting thing. And we shouldn't be too far from firing it up. So hopefully we'll be able to hear this thing run and that that will put a lot of wind in the sails in any project. And I'll be super excited. Yeah. So and I'm sure you will be as well. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and um, we'll see you soon.